IP fabrics using three-stage or five-stage data center architectures are becoming the de facto standard in many tier two cloud providers and telco clouds. Still, the lack of configuration or automation capabilities requires additional effort when deploying these highly scalable networks using eBGP. And that is why the IETF standardization community proposed the BGP unnumbered standard specified in RFC 5549, which is becoming increasingly popular in data center IP fabric ecosystem. I'm excited to have Michael join me on the first three part video series to discuss PGP unnumbered. Michael, thanks for joining. I'd love to hear your thoughts on a few questions I have. Hi, Aaron. Hi, everybody. Thanks for the session today. The first question I have, Michael, is uh, Juniper already has a decent number of BGP capabilities in Junos and Junos OS Evolved. Is there any reason in particular for adding additional BGP capabilities into our data center fabrics? Yeah, good point, Aaron. So as a matter of fact, you know, Juniper, uh, Junos, uh, and Junos Evolved has probably the most extensible uh, uh, BGP uh, feature set. So the BGP stock, we built that over the, the last 20 years, right? And BGP became also very popular inside the IP fabric. So for example, using the QFX 5220s, we can build just a native IP fabric and rely highly on the um, overlays uh, at the server level, right? But we realize also that actually the IP fabrics are becoming very popular for our telco clouds, as well as our enterprise customers, right? So for that kind of customers, they're not necessarily using day one, any of the automation tools or fabric management tools in order to help them deploy the IP fabrics day one, we wanted to make the BGP a little bit more a plug and play. Mm -hmm. So instead of specifying any of the remote IP addressing for the BGP peering between the leaf and spine, in case of BGP and number, we are just specifying the interfaces that, that are going to be used for, for the peering purposes. So it's definitely simplifying the day-to-day -day operations. So whenever we have to plug in a new, new leaf device uh, into the existing fabric, we'll be just specifying the interfaces that's going to be used for the, for the peering purposes, right? So that's definitely easier than specifying the, the, your neighbor's IP addresses, right? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. fantastic. So the other question I have is, of course, is so is B, is the the BGP unnumbered easy to enable compared to IGPs? Good point, good point, Aaron. And and actually, it's uh, very similar to the IGPs, even if conceptually we get from BGP all the beautiful capabilities, such as, for example, we can have the advanced policy statements, route maps can be implemented in order to steer the traffic uh, through uh, specified uh, nodes. But uh, from the configuration point of view with BGP unnumbered, we are also specifying just interfaces where the protocol is going to be running, right? So in, in this case, we are relying on uh, the IPv6 uh, link local addressing and IPv6 uh, route adver router advertisement protocol. So in order to get the information on what is the, my BGP pure IP address, we will be getting that through the BGP, uh, through the uh, IPv6 uh, uh, router advertisement information, right? And based on that, we will automatically enable that BGP peering. There is one obviously additional requirement in the case of BGP and number is to specify the, your uh, peer ASN number, right? As well as my local ASN number. So that's the only criteria which needs to be uh, actually put in place in order to establish the peering um, you know, between the two nodes. Oh, that, that, is, that is awesome. <laughs> and uh, the last question I have, it's, I'm going to go back to the basic now, uh, is what is the difference between BGP and numbered versus regular eBGP? Oh, yeah, Aaron. So very good point. And uh, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we, we get benefits of, of BGP because at the end of the day, it's still BGP and numbered is BGP. So on top of that, we can put in place any 
uh, ingress or egress uh, uh, policy statements. But uh, there is one thing that differentiates BGP unnumbered from uh, any regular BGP, mm -hmm. which is uh, uh, the fact that we typically use the BGP unnumbered in case of uh, point to point uh, peering and not multi hop peering. So it means that from the use case point of view, in case of uh, IP fabrics, we would use typically the BGP unnumbered for underlay purposes. And then on top of that, we can use a, a regular uh, eBGP multi-hop established between the loopback addresses between the leaf devices, for example. So that's the main difference between the two protocols. Thank you, Michael, for an interesting start of the video series on the data center IP fabrics. And for all the viewers, please stay tuned for more uh, videos to, to come. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Thanks, everybody.